So this is what we're making. Domed earrings with studs. And we've made our own studs, but I, I would say use a commercial ear nut just because they're so inexpensive. They fit so easily. We can make our own, but it's a bit labor intensive and I, I don't see the point. So there we go. I'll start by unpacking my new disc cutter. This is uh, Pepe Tools. And they've, uh, they've started doing this thing which is really nice. It's an aluminium holder for the pieces. And the sizes are engraved into the block. So it's quite easy to see what size you need. Now, this set comes with the cutter and with lubricant so that you don't dull the cutter. Centering tools, and these are steel so that they last a little bit longer than the uh, plastic ones. And it comes with a a rubber base to put it on, a silicone base. Now this is in uh, a package so that it doesn't rust. I'll just quickly undo this. It's just lightly oiled. Not, not anything that you have to clean up. But a nice, nice little package. I'll hold this up so you can see it. Take the paper off. Very aesthetic. This uh, base is just made so that it absorbs some of the shock from this so that it lasts longer. So we're going to start by cutting four uh, I think we'll use half inch and the half inch, it has both numbers on here, half inch or 12.7 millimeters and we're using 0.5 fine silver. So we open this up. And it's actually got, this is held on here so that when you open this, it actually physically lifts this up. So it's not spring loaded like some others. So put your metal so that you can see down through the hole Put an equal thickness of metal on the opposite side. Tighten it down. Finger tight. And get your cutter. Make sure that it is the proper size for the hole. Take your uh, lube. And just quickly run that edge around there and you just need to do the very edge and it just so that you don't dull the cutter just like that it'll drop through loosen it shift it so we're going to need four of these now we're going to dome two of the discs and we're going to leave two of them flat and we want a fairly deep hemisphere so we want just the depression that fits this pretty accurately and then the punch that fits the hole but leaves enough room for the metal so we need to see a gap on the side of the dapping punch the doming punch 
hammer it right down to the bottom. And for this, we're just going to use this. We don't need a complete hemisphere. We just want a bit of a dome. So two of them. And you can hear it when it hits the bottom. So now we're ready to proceed. Now we're going to solder the dome to the flat back, but I want to uh, mark the middle so that I can accurately get the post where I want it, right in the middle. So we just measure this, take half that, and in this case it's 6.4. Tighten your calipers, hook the edge on the edge of the disc, drag it across, turn it 90 degrees, and do it again. And you'll have a nice little X marked on your disc. And we don't, we don't have to kill it to put our mark in it, but what I'm going to do is just take a center punch, put it on the mark, and I approach it at an angle so that I can get it exactly on it and just push and it gives me a shallow dent right where I can drop the post. Now I'm going to turn that over so that the dip will be on the outside when I solder this to this side. So do them both. Now because we're soldering this to a flat piece, what we want to do is flatten. So just with 400 grade sandpaper and we take a piece of masking tape, wrap it backwards around our finger, we'll be able to hold this. So just have a look. You should see a nice flat dull edge all the way around. It won't take but a few strokes. It'll just give you a pretty invisible soldered seam. Lovely. So now we're ready to set this up to solder it. So I have this with a little bump sticking up. And Mix up your flux if you haven't already. And we just want to put a small amount around where the solder is going to be. And we want the edge of the dome. And I'm going to take two pieces of hard solder and lay that on the disc using my tweezers. And you can see that I'm just laying it from the middle out. zoom in a bit so you can actually see. So I've just placed the solder this way. A piece there, a piece here. And now I'm just going to drop the disc on top and center it. I want, I want to be able to see the same amount of material all the way around. Do them both. Now I'm going to gently heat this from the bottom, and you can see the solder sticking out of either end. 
And now what's going to happen is, by heating this from the bottom, it'll transfer the heat from the bottom around to the top. Both of them will be the proper temperature at the same time. When the solder melts, it'll just drop down and be a perfect join. So just a neutral flame for this. And gently, because our flux will bubble initially when we're, when we're warming it up and trying to dry it out. So we don't want the sphere to bubble off. We just want the flux to dry out. And if you look at the edge, you can see when the flux is dry, it'll be a crusty white. So I'm going to ignore this one for the moment. I have my solder pick in my hand in case it moves somewhere where I don't want it to. So I'm just about 50 millimeters away underneath, circling. There. Now when the solder flowed, it flowed all the way around. I could see it flow all the way around, and that's what we want. Now, oftentimes when you solder a closed sphere or a closed object, you'll want to drill a vent hole in the back so that the uh, pressure can escape. Well, I'm not going to do that with this one. So what I'm going to do is just leave these to cool on their own. Then I'm going to just flip it over and solder my post on the back. And I'll only pickle this. I'll, I won't quench it at all, ever. I'll only pickle it when it's completely cool. And that way there won't be any moisture on the inside. So now we're ready to put our posts on. Now, you can buy commercial posts with the, uh, with the little flat bit on the end. Get my finger out of the way. So that you can solder it on with a groove already embedded in the end. Or you can just take your sterling wire, file the end flat, rest it in here, and solder it. So I'd, I'll do I'll make these using the wire rather than the pre-cut posts just because it's as easy and it's actually something that we've done ourselves. So I've cut my wire to about 16 millimeters long and that's just so that I can handle it and we're going to file the end flat where it goes onto the earring and then all we're going to do is hold this in our third hand rest it in the depression remember the depression and it's not absolutely critical that it's perfectly straight up and down at this moment. I'll show you why. So this, this old block is kind of crusty, but it, it has irregularities where that dome will fit quite nicely. So just a little bit of flux where the two touch. And I'm going to use hard solder again because... The way this is set on here, even if the solder flows from the original join, it won't make any difference because it's not going to go anywhere. So I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see. So I've placed a small piece of hard solder on the side. We know that there's no moisture inside this, so it's quite safe to solder it again. So our same neutral flame. Now, I'm going to go on the opposite side of the solder. 
First we'll dry it out, push the solder where it needs to be. And now I'm just going to circle, and you can see how quickly the solder flowed on that. Now, that's done, but we're still not going to quench it. We're going to just let it sit there and cool off when we do the next one. Now you can see, it's cool enough to touch, but you can see that the ear wire is a bit wonky, so we're just going to take our parallel jaw pliers, grab the wire, and you, you can see where you'd have to bend it to get it right. So turn it 90 degrees, check it again. Lovely. Now, with our commercial wire and using our parallel jaw pliers, we can see where we need to cut it. So with, with the commercial wire, so I've just stuck it in my parallel jaw pliers and you can see that it's sticking out two and a half millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll just grab this mark it at two and a half millimeters I've got my calipers set down there. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but close. And we also need to mark where our little notch is. So I'll just put it down next to it on the bench. Mark the notch. And we're just going to use our side cutters, cut this off to the length, hold your finger over the end so that you don't shoot your neighbor. And where the mark is for the notch, we're just going to take our side cutters, put it on that spot, and gently squeeze repeatedly as we turn it. And that will give us a nice little notch so that the ear nut doesn't slide off. Now we need to tidy this end up. And I have cup burrs, which will fit over the end quite easily. Or you could just file it and sand it. And so just hold it over the end. And that's all there is to it. However, I will still polish the end just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and shiny. So now we're ready to either leave this the way it is with this ridge showing or file it back so that uh, it's an invisible edge. Up to you. Uh, if you file it back, file it, sand it, and uh, polish it, but pickle it first. So we're out of the tumbler, dry them off, and they're nice and shiny. These are hardened now from being in the tumbler, but if they're not hard enough for you, if, if you think they need to be harder, I'll just show you quickly how to do it. So you just rest the post on your steel bench block. Use a little jeweler's hammer or a riveting hammer. And gently tap this as you turn it. And that will work hard in it so it'll, it'll be nice and stiff. Now check it once again to make sure that it's straight using your parallel jaw pliers because I tweaked that a little bit. Yep, lovely. So we're ready to rock and roll. That's it.